Foot on the brake, pressing the pit. Oh, I think we put it in upside down. Oh, okay. All right, everybody, as you guys already know by the title and the thumbnail of today's video, we are finally going to be installing a throttle controller on my 2013 Genesis Coupe 3.8. Now, I've wanted to install one of these for quite some time, but I had a bunch of people telling me that they weren't that good and it was actually bad for your car to install these. But then soon after I heard that, I had a flood of people tell me in the comments that this is basically the number one cheap mod you should get for your car. Like nothing else will really boost the performance like one of these things will. So we finally have the throttle controller in after about three weeks of waiting and we finally have ourselves a nice day out where it's not pouring rain so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the throttle controller and everything it comes with and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into the install all right everybody here is the throttle controller in all its glory the extra six drive booster everything else is in chinese or japanese i can't really tell you what it says let's go ahead and take a look inside this thing so inside you got yourself your instruction booklet and actually half of it's in English, so this might come in handy. Then you got yourself your Xtros Potent Booster sticker. It's kind of cool, actually. It reminds me of like a Rockstar sticker. Now, I actually ordered this from Blood Type Racing, but it appears that it came from 3.8 Performance or just the guys at Blood Type Racing really like 3.8 Performance because they gave me a 3.8 Performance sticker and wrote this little note about 3.8 Performance right here. Then I got this little uh, this little triangle thing right here, and I guess it's like a, it says a qualified certificate, so I guess it's like a certificate of authentication or whatever it's called something like that and then we got ourselves the actual throttle controller itself right here the extra six drive this little thing right here and now we got the wires to hook it up with so now that we've looked at everything that comes in the box let's go ahead and take this down to the car and start installing this puppy all right so we just got down here we just took the floor mat out and everything really all you need to do this is a 10 millimeter socket t-handle anything and then a flathead screwdriver so the first thing you got to do is you got to pop this little cap off down here at the base of the pedal that's what you need the flathead for probably never been taken off in this car so it might be kind of a pain there we, go. there we go now all you got to do is unscrew that and the pedal should slide right out we just got the bolt out now this pedal should just slide forwards basically just like that easy enough now all we got to do is unplug this wire plug in the uh, new throttle controller in between there and plug it back up and it's as easy as that there we go. All right. All right. So we've got the pedal out here and we've got the harness right here. Now, all you do is actually, I'm going to let Caleb here explain how to do this. So if you look inside of there, it's numbered four and six on the top and one and three on the bottom. So you can see right there, it's also labeled. So you just want to match the numbers. Um, so it's pretty foolproof from that aspect. Should just plug on right in. Yes, sir. I heard it click. All right, and now, now this side will just go into there. Yeah, this side just goes into what you unplugged from the pedal originally. And this one apparently, uh, did we do it right? Yeah, because this one right here is also numbered, but this isn't numbered. Okay. So if this gets plugged in upside down, which it's very easy to do, your car's gonna act funny. And if it does, just turn your car off, unplug it, flip that around, plug it back in, and it'll all be normal. Clicked right in like so. Now, if everything went as we think it went, it should just start right up. No check engine lights, no nothing crazy. Foot on the brake, pressing the pit. Oh, I think we put it in upside down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we put it in upside down. It didn't want to start. So I guess unplug that, flip it around. Plug it back in. Did it go in better that time or yep. feel different? Okay, now let's try it again. There we go, started right up. Make sure there's no check engine lights or nothing. Um, yeah, we're gonna try and get this figured out and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, everybody. So we've done a little bit of research. I think the check engine light is just there because when we plugged it in wrong the first time, it just kind of freaked out the car. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything put back together. Kind of forgot something. Before we get everything put back together, we gotta install the throttle controller itself right here. So all you do is you take the uh, white plug that's connected to the harness thing down there and plug it into the throttle controller. Yeah. I wanna say it, yeah, it's yeah. gotta, it's gotta yeah. It's all right, so it really only fits in one way just kind of slides in like so mm. all right now everything is completely hooked up we're gonna go ahead and start it again real quick make sure this check engine light still uh make sure it didn't just disappear on its own no, i don't think it did no. all right so now we're gonna go ahead and get everything hooked back up i'll show you guys more about this here in just a bit all right everybody we just got everything put back together we kind of just tucked the uh, the cabling and stuff back here out of the way of the pedal. There's no really good spot to put it. Maybe I could like tuck it behind. Oop. 
Maybe I could like tuck it behind the mat here or something, but like for now it should be good right there. Then we just ran the wire that has the throttle controller connected to it and I've just got it sitting here for now. It has a piece of a uh, 3M tape on the back so I can pretty much just stick it wherever, but for now I'm just gonna let it sit there until I figure out where I wanna keep it permanently. Now, as far as the check engine light goes, from what I've read, I should just have to drive the car around and restart it a few times and it should, the ECU I guess should realize that there's nothing wrong and it should go away on its own. So I'm gonna drive the car around for a bit, restart it a few times, make sure I can get this check engine light to go away and then I'll get back to you guys after that. I'm happy to say the check engine light just went away. I drove around for literally less than five minutes, turned the car off, turned it back on and when I turned it back on, no more check engine light. So that is awesome. Now for the small amount of time I was driving the car and since I installed this thing it was set on FH6 now apparently this is the most aggressive uh, setup I guess the most aggressive option then if you press the mode button right here it'll well um, there we go it changes to eco mode that's like just for slowness there's no reason for that then there's uh, that's off like it was never plugged in then you got HA, and this is apparently like mildly aggressive. This is not super aggressive, but like apparently you'll notice a difference. I haven't tried driving in that one yet. I just went straight on to the uh, FH6. And yeah, so the FH is uh, the most aggressive. And then above the H settings, there is the FA, which is I guess the middle aggressive. And uh, yeah, like I said, FH, which is what I've been running it in, FH6, and I can notice a major difference, like honestly. Like, the best way to describe it, I guess, would be, so normally, if I have my car in drive and I press the gas, like, it, it doesn't take off the same way it does if I have it in manual mode and in first gear. Like, it takes off the same way now in drive as it does when I have it set in manual mode and in first gear, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. Like, there's a major difference, and this thing is... This thing's awesome, and I've only driven for, like I said, like three minutes so far. Go ahead and peel this off. I, I think. Um, okay. Maybe not. I thought this thing had a screen protector on it, but the sticker kind of just peeled off on its own. And, uh... Hopefully it's got a screen protector. It's got some scratches on it, uh, but it doesn't look like it. If you guys have one of these, let me know if this thing's got a screen protector on it or if my screen's just kind of scratched up. All right, everybody, that is really going to wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how to install the uh, Tross Potent Booster, or the X Tross Potent Booster, whatever it's called. There's all types of different brands that make these things, I'm pretty sure, but they're all basically the same exact thing. I just happened to get the X Tross one, I believe is what this one's called. But yeah, like you guys saw, the install was super simple, as long as you don't plug it in the wrong way, that is. It literally took less than 15 minutes to install that thing, and by far, this is the best mod I've I've installed just from using it for the short amount of time I have like I can notice the biggest difference after installing this uh, way big obviously the exhaust you notice a way big difference in how it sounds and that's awesome but like performance wise this has got to be your best bet you got to get one of these things now next video I'm going to do an in-depth review of the potent booster and show you guys what all the different modes do and everything about this little thing and if it's worth the money or not but uh, honestly from what I've used of it so far I really do think it's worth the money but like I said everybody that is going to wrap it up for this video if you guys enjoyed this one do not forget to drop a like and subscribe peace out I will see you guys in the next one